Hey Langchain. What would you like to learn from your documents? What's mentioned about the executive power? The context mentions that executive power is vested in the President of the United States, who is the head of the executive branch of the federal government. What else would you like to learn? Thanks. Hey folks. So today we're going to talk about how can we chat with our documents using Siri as a voice chat interface. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we will run Flowwise. And this is something that we have covered in some of our previous tutorials. So I would refer to those videos for the installation part. So once that is completed, I made two flows in here and I followed one of the templates available in the marketplace. So one of those is metadata filter upsert. The other one is load. So this one, the upsert one helps to take any of the documents. So in this particular case, we have text files as well as PDF files. We can upload them and then it uses recursive character text splitter to split them into small chunks and those chunks are embedded in OpenAI embedding and then upserted into Pinecone. So we'll follow pretty much similar type of flow except that I'm going to be taking out this text file block. So I'll just use PDF file and instead of OpenAI embedding, I'll use the Cohere embedding. So let's go to that particular flow. So that's the upsert flow that I'm using. And you notice it's Cohere embeddings. The reason I'm using Cohere in this case is I would like to use the multilingual embeddings API. And the good thing about this particular embedding model is that we can embed over a hundred languages and it gives quite nice results. So I tested a few different languages and it was quite nice with those languages. So one thing to remember that's different than OpenAI embeddings is that if we are using Cohere's multilingual embedding, the dimensions they use is 768. So you have to configure this as your dimension in Pinecone since the other one was 1536 or so. If not, then most likely you'll get some sort of error. So make sure that the dimensions match. Now, once we embed, then we can have a conversation. So previously in our videos, we covered how once we build the flow and once we upload a PDF file, it's good to have a chat. So first thing you'll save the flow and it will ask for you to provide a name, which once you give it a name, then you can chat with the document. So here I asked a few questions and it gave me results. So it shows everything is working fine. A few times it happens that if your API key or maybe the configuration of environment or index is not done properly for Pinecone, it might give you some errors. So I fixed all of those. Now I have tested that everything works fine with Pinecone. So great. Now, once we have the upsert flow working, what I would like to do is, so I don't want to save that. So I would like to load those files from the Pinecone vector database. And for that, there is also a marketplace template, which is metadata filter load. And this particular flow can take the embeddings from Pinecone and then make it available for us to chat with. So same thing, I took this template and instead of the OpenAI embeddings, I changed that to Cohere embedding. So I have the same embedding model used for upserting and then for loading. And then I provided same information as before, all the API keys and environment and index configuration. With that, if I were to have a chat, then things work fine. So both sides of upserting and loading is working good. And this is something we covered in previous videos in case if you'd like to go in details and have a good understanding of how and why are we using these blocks. So once both of these flows are completed, now how do we call that from Siri? So we're going to follow similar steps of calling via API call. The way we do that is we click on this button and then we have the, the link that we can call to run these flows. So we'll just go to the one which was for loading the documents. So I'm going to copy this particular link, which is of interest. Again, we can also use some of the available configurations that we could change them for 
any particular tweaking of the call. So maybe if we want to use a particular document, we can filter that using metadata filter, or if we want to call a different namespace, or if we want to have a few different settings. For now, I think just this is enough in our case. Now, once we have the link, the way we can build apps for Siri is through an app called Shortcuts. This is available in Mac as well as in iPhone. So once you open that, you'll have a few pre-built templates, but then we are interested in building something from scratch. So we'll start a, a new shortcut here. So once you start something new, you will have a blank canvas. You have a few different options to the side, and these are quite nice. You can test out a few different automation options here. So in our case, basically, we want to get user input. We want to save that user input somewhere. And then we want to send that input as query to the API that we copied before. And then once we run the query through the API, we get something back as a return or response that we want to show that to the user. So there are two different ways I've seen some people doing as a voice recording and then transcribing that. That is one possibility. But then the easier way I found out was just using the ask block. And there are many different blocks that you'll see you could kind of browse through all of them. And this one, what it does, you have some, some good descriptions available. So it says displays a dialogue prompting the user to enter a piece of information. So in our case, we want to do that. So we'll use the ask block and with prompt. And this is going to be any prompt that we would like to ask the user. So in my case, maybe I'll say, what would you like to learn from your documents? So just to kind of point out if I'm using a document Q&A system. Now, the second thing is once we have this input from user, we want to save it as a variable. So for that, there is something called setting variable, or you can also maybe search as variable. So I'll use the set variable block. And within this, it says give some name to the variable. So I'm just going to say query. And we basically set that variable query to the available provided input from the block before. Now, this is good. We have a variable set. We want to use this variable to send and make the API call. So I'm going to search for API. And the option for that is get contents of URL. And you can see some description. It has different methods available here. So I'll just drag and drop. And now uh, automatically it pulls that I want to get contents of query, but I actually don't want to do that because I want to call a an API for this particular task. So I'll clear this and let's clear that. I'm going to bring the URL that I copied before, which is, as mentioned before, we'll take this and then save it here. Now that looks good. I'm going to do a post call. That's the call that Flowwise accepts. So you notice it's a post call. And then I do not have any authorization. So that should be good. If you have authorization, you'll set something here. You'll add a, um, a key value pair of the authorization. So I'll remove that by clicking and deleting. Okay. Now the JSON for the body. So Flowwise accepts question as the key and then any given value that we would like to ask. So that's what we're going to follow. We'll say this as question, and then it's type text, and the value in our case is going to be the variable. So I'm going to call this, or actually I called this before query, so it automatically pulls for us. I'm just going to use that. Okay, so with this, we have the minimum flow. Now I want to see the results of uh, the API call. So I'm just going to actually look for show results. So this is another block available. So you see, it's quite easy, drag and drop, and then you can see the results. Now with this, I can see the results and actually run this particular flow to get answers. Okay, so let's give it a try. I'm going to play this, which means that I can run these blocks together and see how it works. So I'm just going to ask what's mentioned about legislative power. So I uploaded the Constitution of the United States. Uh, there is something mentioned about legislative power. So let's give it a try. So once I run it, first time it asks that you want to add this and run this for privacy reasons. So I'm going to allow. 
I want it to run. And there we go. So it connected with Flowwise and it is now giving me the answers. So we can save this as is and run this. I try to keep actually a loop below this. So first time it asks, okay, what would you like to learn from your documents? And then it gives some response. Then I want the option that it asks me after that again, what else would you like to learn? So it loops and then we end it as needed with some sort of keyword. So that's what I'm going to do actually. So for that particular case, I'm just going to bring another loop block, which will help us with that. All right. So there's an option repeat and repeat with each. So in this case, I'm just going to use repeat block, just drop down there. So now this has options of how many times you want to repeat. You can say as many times. So I'm just going to say maybe, okay, what five times just to begin with. And you can loop through if you have an agent or you have a complex app, you want some sort of interaction back and forth with Flowwise. Certainly you can increase these repetition, but then I want it to actually stop if I were to give it a keyword. Let's say if I were to call it thank you or stop or something along those lines. So uh, I want it to end this loop and not keep asking. Now there is an option in iPhone where if you were to press the power button or any other button, it just closes the loop with Siri. So you could also do that, but this is just again, if you want to have interactions more than one time and not ended using power button. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the if else loop and I will drag and drop right there. So in the repetition block and here I'm going to say if the query contains the stop word, then end it. If not, then keep going. So if I'm just going to clear this it automatically pull some input variables. So I'm going to save the query and it contains, maybe we can say thanks as a word. So if I were to say thanks, then if that happens, then end, I believe it's called stop. Okay. Yeah. That's the one we're looking for. So we want the stop this shortcut. This is the one that we can use to stop the shortcut. So if our query contains thanks, then we stop the shortcut. And if it does not contain, we want to keep looping through. And the action we want to do is we would like to use this same API call block. So I'm just going to right click, duplicate that, and then I'll just drag and drop and otherwise, and same thing again. Now, once we call the API, I need to show the content as well. So I'm just going to show that here. So now in this way, as long as we keep asking question, it should run. If we say thanks, then it should stop. Actually, I missed something, which is to ask again, what else would you like to learn? So that is something we would like to keep repeating that question. So I'm just going to copy this uh, and duplicate this again. So I want to drop this particular block right below the repetition portion. And once we ask question, I want to keep it a little different. What else would you like to learn from your documents? And then again, if we ask, then we need to save that as a variable. So I'm going to duplicate and then use that down here. Nice. So a good way to check if these are connected blocks, you'll see this line. So it takes that input and then sets that as variable. Same thing up here. And also for API calls, when once you call the API, then it shows the contents of that particular API call. Okay, everything looks good. We can give it a try again. So I'm just going to ask what's mentioned about legislative powers. It runs, calls the API. Great. Now the question should contain what else would you like to learn? Great. I'm just going to say what's mentioned about executive powers. Now it should call again. And then there is something mentioned about that. And it's going to keep looping again and again until we say thanks. So let's test it with thanks. And if that happened, it should end great. Now, all of that is configured. We want to give it some sort of name. So I'm going to call this Hey Langchain. Great. So once this is saved, now, if you were to call this from your iPhone, if you have an iPhone connected with your Mac, it should detect Hey Langchain. If you were to build this flow on iPhone itself, then again, you have this as a shortcut. So you just press the power button to trigger Siri, and then you say, Hey, Langchain, 
And as soon as you say that, it will ask you the question, which is what would you like to learn from your documents? And then it goes through the rest of the loop. So this is quite nice if you were to use Siri as your voice based chat assistant to chat with your documents or chat with your agent apps. There are many possibilities again, using Flowwise, one could build all these available different apps in marketplace. And then the final interaction with these apps could be using Siri. So that could be quite handy for any of your apps. If not, at least it looks cool that you can showcase it to your friends. And if you'd like to learn more about building no code based AI apps using Langchain, I'm going to be launching a course soon. So at buildbyu.com, you can look through all the details. So we'll be using something called bubble, which is a complete no code based tool and connecting that with Langchain based frameworks flow wise and Langflow. And we'll be building chatbots, agent apps and other AI apps. So definitely recommend you to check it out. It's going to be launching soon. There is pre-launch offer going on so you can benefit from that. Thank you.